How many times have you been in a sales process and you've heard the objection, your videos are too expensive and they've gone with either someone else completely and you've missed out on that work or they just don't seem to see the value that you bring to them with your camera. Well, in this video, I'm gonna dive into this objection and how we handle it in our production company to try and turn those people back round because of course, yes, we could just say, okay, you're lost, see you later. But that's not very good for business, is it? So we try and turn those people back around, make them see the value that we bring and then get them on board as a client. Before I reveal the question that you're now gonna ask in every single meeting you have, it's important to know these tips when dealing with this kind of objection. The first is that you need to address it head on. If someone says that you're too expensive, then don't just walk around it or move on to something else because the second you start trying to justify yourself, you're on the back foot and you're gonna be basically in a boxing match with your back up against the ropes and you've got nowhere to go at the end of the day. So address it head on. And some uh, kind of a tip that we would use is, okay, I understand that you think they might be too expensive. Could you explain why? Rather than saying, but we do all of this stuff, but we do this differently or, or that kind of thing. It kind of feels like a very much like a, a school child not getting their own way. Whereas we ask them to provide more information. And then when you're listening to their reply, you should be able to pull out points of what they're saying. What is it that they haven't fully understood? And then you can provide more value around that aspect too. Often when people say that your videos are too expensive, they just simply haven't understood the value that you provide them with and the, the solution to their problem. They feel like there's some kind of disconnect there and therefore they just don't think it's worth that much. Now we've even had people say to us through cold emails before, thank you, we just don't have the budget for this at the time. And you think, well, how do you know how much we cost? You haven't even asked us what the price is and they're saying no already. And that's because they, they just don't think it's the right fit. So we would always go back with another type of question, which would be, okay, I understand that we might be kind of too far apart, but what budget did you have in mind? And then pause. Let them actually then reply to that question and see what they're gonna come back with. Because if you're asking them, okay, we might be too expensive, but by saying we're too expensive, gives you an indication that they have some idea of how much they were happy to spend. And sometimes in the negotiation process, this comes actually right after the point where they've said, we don't have a budget in mind, and then you've told them the price, and then they tell you you're too expensive. So ask them what their budget actually is. And now as a rule of thumb, we actually try and get this out in our initial discovery calls quite early on, and we ask the client straight away, do you have a budget in mind for this production? And if they say no, then we kind of go around it one way, or or they say, yep, yeah, we're thinking roughly around this. And then that gives us an idea of what's possible or capable within that kind of budget. The client will then reply with something that will either be similar to what you had mentioned, maybe a slightly bit cheaper, or they might say something where it's miles apart. And we've had both scenarios. So we've had one client say that, you know, their budget was X and it was only about two or three hundred dollars lower than what we were charging. So we said, okay, well, look, we can do something within that price. We're just going to have to relook and see how we can streamline this process. Um, are you happy for us to do that? And they, they said yes. So we would then just basically take a few line items out, maybe not produce as many videos or whatever it was with that particular client. And then we were still able to win the business rather than just following some advice that you see online, which is know your worth. Don't ever you know lower your prices or do the X, Y, Z, but you can always adjust your prices to fit in with the budget. Budget. Or in the cases that we've also had is when they've said, oh, literally, I was just thinking this would cost like one or two hundred dollars and we're sitting there at a couple thousand dollars. Then we just say, yeah, unfortunately, we're just too far apart on this this process. If you do find anyone that would do it for that price, then please, can you let me know? Because we're always outsourcing work, um, but we just struggle to find anyone that can deliver our value and our level of quality within that kind of price bracket. But please stay in touch. You know, you never know how things might come up and we're always looking to work with creators like that. So then that way, they're never going to get back in touch with you, but it does position you as like a, a point of, yeah, we can't find anyone to work with our level of quality for that. A third option that may happen when they disclose their budget might be a case where you can say, okay, look, I can't do it for that price. We're, we're, we're quite far away on our pricing at the moment. So 
let me have a ask around. I know a lot of creators and let me see if I can find someone that can do that for you. Are you happy for me to do that and see if I can find someone that fits that role? And if they'll be like, oh yeah, sure, that's really helpful. Thanks, thanks ever so much. And then you can outsource that project. So it might be that you actually can find a creator that charges, let's say, $200 a day, you've got a budget of $400 um, and you are able to basically um, do some kind of deal where the creator will now work with that client and then you can take a little bit of commission the same way as a salesperson would for finding that fee. That's certainly something that, that we do um, a, a lot of the time as well. And we work with other people that do the same thing. When they refer work to us, we give them a kickback because they've basically acted as the sale. They could have passed it to anyone, but they decided to pass it to us. So we give them a little bit back as a result of that. Now, I want you guys to make note of this right now because this will be one of the most valuable questions that you can ever ask a client. And it's something that we now ask everyone because of its power in this whole process when you're talking to them. So you ask the client simply this, would you rather on this project that we prioritize the following budget quality or speed and work it out like a triangle okay so you've got budget quality and speed they can only ever have two of those things if they want the speed they want it turned around quickly and they want it done cheaply it won't be good quality if they want it quick and good quality then it's not going to be cheap if they want it cheap and good quality, then it won't be done fast because it will fall to the back of the pile and so on and so forth. Having that question transformed the way that we did business and it enabled us to address the budget challenge very quickly and so that we knew what foot we were stepping forward on this production with. And now it enables us to very quickly highlight people who are just cost focused and speed focused and they kind of say, well, I kind of want everything. And you say, well, you you can't it's like it's not possible to do something really high quality cheap and fast it's, it's physically in any industry this applies to now we ask that it nicely brings up the idea about do you have a budget in mind and if they say yep our budget is around about you know whatever a thousand dollars and you say okay and then on this production would you like us to prioritize budget quality or speed and sometimes, to be fair, we kind of bring them up in different orders. Sometimes we'll ask that question first, followed by, do you have a budget in mind? Or when they disclose a budget in mind, and now we work a lot on bigger productions, it obviously, we kind of know the associated budgets and also the clients on the same end. But when you're working as a one-man band, a solo entrepreneur, a single videographer, then you generally have a lot of those problems where no one really talks about the budget or the price and you need to bring it up quicker. So utilize that question, start to understand from your client's point of view exactly what they're looking for. Objections around pricing comes at any stage of your business. I thought I wouldn't have this problem now in my business. When I started out, I thought, it just simply wouldn't happen because we're an established production company. Let me tell you, it happens at every point. I know production companies that make millions and millions and for them, it still happens for uh, you know the whole pricing structure. It will always come back to price, but it's how you can convey your value. And you can often do that through case studies or your track record mainly speaking, your portfolio. So it's how you start to articulate the value that you're bringing across. A nice question to use in this process is to ask them why they want video in the first place and what kind of problem are they looking to solve in their business right now and how video actually fits that void. So they might say, well, Ross, we wanna make more sales or they might say, hey, Ross, well, we wanna get more engagement. We wanna get more members signing up to our app. And we say, okay, so let's focus on the engagement side of, of this video. Then you can take that information and then you can start to pitch back to them ideas that will increase their engagement through video content. And you can start to provide more and more value. So they're at the other end thinking, wow, I just thought we'd just get a quick video made, but actually now this makes so much more sense. And they've said about doing TikToks because that's where our audience is. And you know, you can start to provide huge amounts of value and that will separate you more. The worst thing is when a client compares you to an absolute beginner, and that's kind of the worst case scenario. Now, if you're an absolute beginner, then you're actually in a good situation because you'll be able to say yes to most jobs. But I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you're probably not. So you're trying to get your value and you're trying to get your worth and you don't want to be compared to a $50 filmmaker when you're charging five, $600 a day or more or whatever that is. And that's just 
getting across the value that you bring. And don't forget that's also within your marketing. That's the content that you put out there. If you're only putting out there crappy content, you're only gonna attract crappy clients. Finally, you wanna offer alternative options. So we have different pricing packages with our RCP system, which is our retainer model. And basically a retainer model signs a client up to you for a, a length term of at least a year. And then you provide content for them over that year long period in return for X amount every month. It's great because it provides you with complete predictability within your business. You know exactly how much money you've got coming in every month. You don't need to constantly start finding new clients all the time because your existing clients are working with you for a period of a year. So it creates a really predictable cash flow. I've got a free training about this. This isn't the video for it, but I'll link it in the description below. Go and check that out if you wanna implement that into your own business. But my point being, we have different packages depending on different pricing options. So we effectively have a you know low, medium, and high bronze, silver, gold package that people can pick from. Generally speaking, they go straight down the middle and pick the one in the middle. But by having those different options for people, it gives them an opportunity to take what fits in with their budget. So if you're a person that's currently thinking about pricing stuff just ad hoc as and when people come in and you think you can just charge what you want, maybe start to think about actual day rates and how you can build your value into those day rates. And then especially when you're starting out, it's gonna make it so much easier to recall these numbers and then provide packages based on those three options. That way you're gonna be getting clients that say yes to a lot more work and you're not necessarily offering discounts, you're just offering a slightly lesser service, a slightly lesser amount of deliverables, whatever it is, so that you're still getting paid in line with what you normally would, but you're just fitting in with your client's budgets better. It's better than the alternative, which is saying, okay, we're too expensive, bye.